Um, so the main thing I wanted to demo was Minikube, which is a fork of Docker Machine, um, which if anyone hasn't used, it's like a VM drive. It's like a thing that provisions Docker for you on XHive or KVM or VirtualBox on your machine so you can use the Linux kernel and a Linux VM on OS X because everyone likes OS X because it's actually pretty and projectors work. Um, <laughs> So this is what Docker Machine is. It's and then there's a Lib Machine Go library, and Minikube is just a fork that provisions the VM with Docker and then Kubernetes as a single Go binary that runs all the components for both a master and a client or node to provision, like, run Kubernetes resources stuff. Uh, so I think it's running. No, okay. So, Minikube supports, is that too small? Was that fine? Um, it supports the same VM drivers that Docker Machine supports. So I have the Docker Machine driver for XHive on my machine, I, like in my path, so then I can create a Minikube VM with, Docker, with XHive by just saying VM driver XHive, but it already exists, so I'm just gonna start it again. And then what it basically does is it, clo it pulls down an ISO that it uses to bring up that VM. And now we wait. So what I've done is, what I will do once it's running is I pull down some example Docker Compose and then I translated it to Kubernetes files with this thing called Compose with a K, not with a C, which then uh, if you give it a Docker Compose file, it creates the necessary Kubernetes files, but Jason, shit to read, so sorry, um, crap, bad to read. Uh, so then we can create it with YAML instead, and then I've already created them and moved them to this Kubernetes file, so then, or directory, so if we look, there's a Kubernetes deployment and a service for both a web thing and a Redis, uh, a web service and a Redis service, and it, the web service just writes to Redis how many times a page has been viewed, so then, now that Kubernetes is up on this VM and provisioned, we can do stuff like this and open the Kubernetes dashboard with self-signed certificates. And that's awkward. Uh, <laughs> pretend that worked. Uh, <laughs> wait, so then now I'm bringing up the Redis and the web service. And while I'll do that, I'll get the dashboard to actually load. Uh, So if everyone likes the Rancher dashboards and all the other dashboards, Kubernetes does have a similar one once I figure out how it works. Um, or like DCOS and stuff. Okay, wait, let me just, so then this is the thing running. Oh wait, it's, okay. Uh, <laughs> live demos suck, uh, especially since I did this downstairs. Uh, so now, with how Kubernetes works is so there's a service which is basically a cluster internal load balancer for each, for there's an, one for the Kubernetes master API, there's one for Redis, and there's one for this web server that I'm gonna hit, but then all by default, they're only for cluster internal stuff. So I'm gonna change it to be a node port, which means it, Kubernetes figures out an unused no, uh, port on every node or like a cluster level port that it can then open on every node to share this load, to make that load balancer accessible on any port basically. So now if I get the services, if I first learn how to type and then get the services, it says now that it has an external IP but it's just the port on the node. So now if I describe that web service, there's a node port which I then, if I got the Minikube IP, like you can get a Docker Machine IP, and then hit that in the node port, it would work, but instead Minikube has a sort of utility around that where you give it the name of a service and in your browser it opens the web, the, it just basically concatenates Minikube IP and the node port, and then I'm hitting that web thing on the VM in Minikube. Um, and then Minikube also has a dashboard, which I can try get working, but that takes time, and I don't know how much time I actually have. Do I have time? Maybe. Okay. Uh, 
So then I forget the port again. Uh, if I learn how to type, what did I do wrong? Uh, did, oh, yes, thank you. Uh, if I do that, then get the Kubernetes dashboard to find what port I actually need to hit it on. Uh, but then I'll put YAML because. Uh, but then here is like similar to the way I've defined that web service. There's a web deployment where I say what port I want to hit inside the container. There's a similar one for the Kubernetes dashboard somewhere. Port 9090. So then if I go again and do that port forward, but on 9090 instead, and then hit this port. I've got it. I've got it. It's OK. <laughs> Thanks, Dale. Um, but then, cool. So now there is, like, there is since Kubernetes 1.4, which came out in the last month or so, a cool way to play with Kubernetes on your local machine. So yeah, that's me done. Thank you. <laughs>